Chapters 12 through 20 of Job, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 12 Then Job answered and said, No doubt, but ye are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Yea, who knoweth not such things as these? I am as one that is a laughing-stock to his neighbor. I who called upon God, and he answered. The just, the perfect man, is a laughing-stock. In the thought of him that is at ease, there is contempt for misfortune. It is ready for them whose foot slippeth. The tents of robbers prosper, and they that provoke God are secure, into whose hand God bringeth abundantly. But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the birds of the heavens, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, who knoweth not in all these, that the hand of Jehovah hath wrought this and whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. Doth not the ear try words, even as the palate tasteth its food? With aged men is wisdom, and in length of days understanding. With God is wisdom and might, he hath counsel and understanding. Behold, he breaketh down, and it cannot be built again. He shutteth up a man, and there can be no opening. Behold, he withholdeth the waters, and they dry up. Again he sendeth them out, and they overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He leadeth counsellors away, stripped, and judges maketh he fools. He looseth the bond of kings, and he bindeth their loins with a girdle. He leadeth priests away, stripped, and overthroweth the mighty. He removeth the speech of the trusty, and taketh away the understanding of the elders. He poureth contempt upon princes, and looseth the belt of the strong. He uncovereth deep things out of darkness, and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. He increaseth the nations, and he destroyeth them. He enlargeth the nations, and he leadeth them captive. He taketh away understanding from the chiefs of the people of the earth, and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. They grope in the dark without light, and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. End of chapter 12. Chapter 13. Lo, mine eye hath seen all this, mine ear hath heard and understood it. What ye know the same do I know also. I am not inferior unto you. Surely I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with God. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. Oh, that ye would altogether hold your peace, and it would be your wisdom. Hear now my reasoning, and hearken to the pleadings of my lips. Will ye speak unrighteously for God? and talk deceitfully for him? Will ye show partiality to him? Will ye contend for God? Is it good that he should search you out? Or as one deceiveth a man, will ye deceive him? He will surely reprove you, if ye do secretly show partiality. Shall not his majesty make you afraid, and his dread fall upon you? Your memorable sayings are proverbs of ashes, your defences are defences of clay. Hold your peace, let me alone that I may speak, and let come on me what will. Wherefore should I take my flesh in my teeth, and put my life in my hand? Behold, he will slay me, I have no hope. Nevertheless, I will maintain my ways before him. This also shall be my salvation, that a godless man shall not come before him. Hear diligently my speech, and let my declaration be in your ears. Behold now, I have set my cause in order. I know that I am righteous. 
who is he that will contend with me? For then would I hold my peace, and give up the ghost. Only do not two things unto me, then will I not hide myself from thy face. Withdraw thy hand far from me, and let not thy terror make me afraid. Then call thou, and I will answer. Or let me speak, and answer thou me. How many are mine iniquities and sins? Make me to know my transgression and my sin. Wherefore hidest thou thy face, and holdest me for thine enemy? Wilt thou harass a driven leaf, and wilt thou pursue the dry stubble? For thou writest bitter things against me, and makest me to inherit the iniquities of my youth. Thou puttest my feet also in the stocks, and markest all my paths. Thou settest a bound to the soles of my feet. Though I am like a rotten thing that consumeth, like a garment that is moth-eaten. End of chapter 13. Chapter 14. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower, and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such a one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months is with thee, and thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Look away from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as a hireling, his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and put forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and is laid low, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the river wasteth and drieth up, so man lieth down and riseth not. Till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be roused out of their sleep. O oh, that thou wouldest hide me in Sheol, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my warfare would I wait, till my release should come. Thou wouldest call, and I would answer thee. Thou wouldest have a desire to the work of thy hands. But now thou numberest my steps. Dost thou not watch over my sin? My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou fastenest up mine iniquity. But the mountain falling cometh to naught, and the rock is removed out of its place. The waters wear the stones, the overflowings thereof wash away the dust of the earth, so thou destroyest the hope of man. Thou prevailest for ever against him, and he passeth. Thou changest his countenance, and sendest him away. His sons come to honour, and he knoweth it not, and they are brought low but he perceiveth it not of them. But his flesh upon him hath pain, and his soul within him mourneth. End of chapter 14 Chapter 15 Then answered Eliphaz the Temanite, and said, Should a wise man make answer with vain knowledge, and fill himself with the east wind? Should he reason with unprofitable talk, or with speeches wherewith he can do no good? Yea, thou doest away with fear, and hinderest devotion before God. For thine iniquity teacheth thy mouth, and thou choosest the tongue of the crafty. Thine own mouth condemneth thee, and not I. Yea, thine own lips testify against thee. Art thou the first man that was born? Or wast thou brought forth before the hills? Hast thou heard the secret counsel of God? And dost thou limit wisdom to thyself? What knowest thou that we know not? What understandest thou which is not in us? With us are both the gray-headed and the very aged men, much elder than thy father. 
are the consolations of god too small for thee even the word that is gentle toward thee why doth thy heart carry thee away and why do thine eyes flash that against god thou turnest thy spirit and lettest words go out of thy mouth what is man that he should be clean and he that is born of a woman that he should be righteous behold he putteth no trust in his holy ones yea the heavens are not clean in his sight how much less one that is abominable and corrupt a man that drinketh iniquity like water i will show thee hear thou me and that which i have seen i will declare which wise men have told from their fathers and have not hid it unto whom alone the land was given and no stranger passed among them the wicked man travaileth with pain all his days even the number of years that are laid up for the oppressor a sound of terrors is in his ears in prosperity the destroyer shall come upon him he believeth not that he shall return out of darkness and he is waited for of the sword he wandereth abroad for bread saying where is it he knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand distress and anguish make him afraid they prevail against him as a king ready to the battle because he hath stretched out his hand against god and behaveth himself proudly against the almighty he runneth upon him with a stiff neck with the thick bosses of his bucklers because he hath covered his face with his fatness and gathered fat upon his loins and he hath dwelt in desolate cities and houses which no man inhabited which were ready to become heaps he shall not be rich neither shall his substance continue neither shall their possessions be extended on the earth he shall not depart out of darkness the flame shall dry up his branches and by the breath of god's mouth shall he go away let him not trust in vanity deceiving himself for vanity shall be his recompense it shall be accomplished before his time and his branch shall not be green he shall shake off his unripe grape as the vine and shall cast off his flower as the olive tree for the company of the godless shall be barren and fire shall consume the tents of bribery they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity and their heart prepareth deceit End of chapter fifteen chapter sixteen then job answered and said i have heard many such things miserable comforters are ye all shall vain words have an end or what provoketh thee that thou answerest i also could speak as ye do if your soul were in my soul's stead i could join words together against you and shake my head at you but i would strengthen you with my mouth and the solace of my lips would assuage your grief though i speak my grief is not assuaged and though i forbear what am i eased but now he hath made me weary thou hast made desolate all my company and thou hast laid fast hold on me which is a witness against me and my leanness riseth up against me it testifieth to my face he hath torn me in his wrath and persecuted me he hath gnashed upon me with his teeth mine adversary sharpeneth his eyes upon me they have gaped upon me with their mouth they have smitten me upon the cheek reproachfully they gather themselves together against me god delivereth me to the ungodly and casteth me into the hands of the wicked i was at ease and he brake me asunder yea he hath taken me by the neck and dashed me to pieces he hath also set me up for his mark his archers compass me round about he cleaveth my reins asunder and doth not spare he poureth out my gall upon the ground he breaketh me with breach upon breach he runneth upon me like a giant i have sewed sackcloth upon my skin and have laid my horn in the dust my face is red with weeping and on my eyelids is the shadow of death although there is no violence in my hands and my prayer is pure o earth cover not thou my blood and let my cry have no resting place even now behold my witness is in heaven and he that voucheth for me is on high my friends scoff at me 
but mine eye poureth out tears unto God, that he would maintain the right of a man with God, and a son of man with his neighbor. For when a few years are come, I shall go the way whence I shall not return. End of chapter 16 Chapter 17 My spirit is consumed, my days are extinct, the grave is ready for me. Surely there are mockers with me, and mine eye dwelleth upon their provocation. Give now a pledge, be surety for me with thyself. Who is there that will strike hands with me? For thou hast hid their heart from understanding, therefore shalt thou not exalt them. He that denounceth his friends for a prey, even the eyes of his children shall fail. But he hath made me a byword of the people, and they spit in my face. Mine eye also is dim by reason of sorrow, and all my members are as a shadow. Upright men shall be astonished at this, and the innocent shall stir up himself against the godless. Yet shall the righteous hold on his way, and he that hath clean hands shall wax stronger and stronger. But as for you all, come on now again, and I shall not find a wise man among you. My days are past, my purposes are broken off, even the thoughts of my heart. They change the night into day, the light, say they, is near unto the darkness. If I look for Sheol as my house, if I have spread my couch in the darkness, if I have said to corruption, Thou art my father, to the worm, Thou art my mother and my sister, where then is my hope? And as for my hope, who shall see it? It shall go down to the bars of Sheol, when once there is rest in the dust. End of chapter 17 Chapter 18 Then answered Bildad the Shuhite, and said, How long will ye hunt for words? Consider, and afterwards we will speak. Wherefore are we counted as beasts, and are become unclean in your sight? Thou that tearest thyself in thine anger, Shall the earth be forsaken for thee? Or shall the rock be removed out of its place? Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tent, and his lamp above him shall be put out. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walketh upon the toils. A gin shall take him by the heel, and a snare shall lay hold on him. A noose is hid for him in the ground, and a trap for him in the way. Terrors shall make him afraid on every side, and shall chase him at his heels. His strength shall be hunger-bitten, and calamity shall be ready at his side. The members of his body shall be devoured, yea, the firstborn of death shall devour his members. He shall be rooted out of his tent, where he trusteth, and he shall be brought to the king of terrors. There shall dwell in his tent that which is none of his. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness, and chased out of the world. He shall have neither son, nor son's son among his people, nor any remaining where he sojourned. They that come after shall be astonished at his day, as they that went before were affrighted. Surely such are the dwellings of the unrighteous, and this is the place of him that knoweth not God. End of chapter 18. Chapter 19. Then Job answered and said, How long will ye vex my soul, and break me in pieces with words? These ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye deal hardly with me. And be it indeed that I have erred, mine error remaineth with myself. If indeed ye will magnify yourselves against me, and plead against me my reproach, know now that God hath subverted me in my cause, and hath compassed me with his net. Behold, I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. I cry for help, 
but there is no justice. He hath walled up my path that I cannot pass, and hath set darkness in my paths. He hath stripped me of my glory, and taken the crown from my head. He hath broken me down on every side, and I am gone, and my hope hath he plucked up like a tree. He hath also kindled his wrath against me, and he counteth me unto him as one of his adversaries. His troops come on together, and cast up their way against me, and encamp round about my tent. He hath put my brethren far from me, and mine acquaintance are wholly estranged from me. My kinsfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. They that dwell in my house and my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I call unto my servant, and he giveth me no answer, though I entreat him with my mouth. My breath is strange to my wife, and my supplication to the children of mine own mother. Even young children despise me. If I arise, they speak against me. All my familiar friends abhor me, and they whom I loved are turned against me. My bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Have pity upon me, have pity upon me, O ye, my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Why do ye persecute me as God, and are not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were now written, oh, that they were inscribed in a book, that with an iron pen and lead they were graven in the rock for ever. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and at last he will stand up upon the earth, and after my skin even this body is destroyed. Then without my flesh shall I see God, whom I, even I, shall see on my side, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. My heart is consumed within me. If ye say, How we will persecute him, and that the root of the matter is found in me, be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. End of chapter 19. Chapter 20. Then answered Zophar the Namathite, and said, Therefore do my thoughts give answer to me, even by reason of my haste that is in me. I have heard the reproof which putteth me to shame, and the spirit of my understanding answereth me. Knowest thou not this of old time? Since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short in the joy of the godless, but for a moment, though his height mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish for ever like his own dung. They that have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek the favor of the poor, and his hands shall give back his wealth. His bones are full of his youth, but it shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and will not let it go, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his food in his bowels is turned. It is the gall of asps within him. He hath swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God will cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of asps. The viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not look upon the rivers, the flowing streams of honey and butter. That which he labored for shall he restore, and shall not swallow it down. According to the substance that he hath gotten, he shall not rejoice, for he hath oppressed and forsaken the poor. He hath violently taken away a house, and he shall not build it up, because he knew no quietness within him. He shall not save aught of that wherein he delighteth. There was nothing left that he devoured not. Therefore his prosperity shall not endure. In the fullness of his sufficiency he shall be in straits. The hand of every one that is in misery shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, 
God will cast the fierceness of his wrath upon him, and will rain it upon him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of brass shall strike him through. He draweth it forth, and it cometh out of his body. Yea, the glittering point cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. All darkness is laid up for his treasure. A fire not blown by man shall devour him. It shall consume that which is left in his tent. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity, and the earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart. His goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from God, and the heritage appointed unto him by God. End of chapter 20